Do you ever just want to get away from it all? Just leave behind all the obligation and societal constraints. Forget about school and politics and playing among us and truly social distance yourself from all of society. What if I told you there was a lifestyle out there that truly meets this criteria? Freedom, literal social distancing, mustaches. Well, it does exist and they were called the Cossacks. Wait, that's a funny word. What does that even mean, Cossack? It says here, it's from an old Slavic word meaning Cossack, meaning free man, Today's illustrative example is me? What up, I'm Ben Freeman from Freemanpedia.com where I try to break down AP World History Modern to people like you all over the world. But sometimes there just isn't enough on YouTube on a certain topic, or it's not focused enough for AP World History. And that's where the staff here at Illustrative Example steps in. Today we leave the constraints of society behind and go out to live with the free men of Russia. But it's way too early for me to be throwing words at you like Dnieper or Pugachev. Let's get some context. You can't randomly start talking about people living on the outskirts of Russian society. Put me on horseback, ride me out to the steppes. Who are these people? Why are they here? What's their deal? You gotta put these people into historical context. It's the Star Wars crawl. After the long time ago, far, far away bit, they hit you up with the crawl. This takes whatever Star Wars action you're about to see and puts it into context of the greater Star Wars story. You need to do this with history. What specific thing are you talking about? How does that fit into the greater scheme of history? You have to do this toward the beginning of your LEQs. Hook the reader by describing the broader historical context relevant to the topic of the question. <sighs> One minute on the clock. Okay, super simple. Take these people from the fringes of the Russian Empire and bring them front and center. AP World History second period spans 1450 to 1750. And within that time period, they break it down into two units. Today's illustrative example spans both units. Unit three is all about the land-based empires. They want you to know nine of them. But for us today, we're gonna focus on one, the big one, Russia. Is it European? Is it Asian? <laughs> yes. But we aren't just in Unit 3 with the land-based empires. The Cossacks themselves actually appear in Unit 4. Unit 4 is all about the Maritime Empires. But they have nothing to do with the Maritime Empire like the rest of Unit 4. Rather, they show up towards the end of Unit 4 in a section called 4.6, Challenges to State Power. This section is all about the people who stood up to either the land-based empires of Unit 3 or the Maritime Empires of Unit 4. Or both, the rebels. As you may remember, I covered one of these examples a few weeks ago, the Marathans. But today we focus on Russia. And Russia may not be the College Board's favorite empire. That would be the Ottomans. But don't sleep on Russia. In this period, Russia is the land of the Tsars. Their empire is expanding and they're truly coming into their own after their cultural big brother to the south, the Byzantine Empire, fell just three years into this unit. So the Russian Empire's expansion is massive. By the end of this period, they're well on their way to being the third largest empire in the history of the planet. And while other European states are moving away from serfdom, the Russians are actually increasing the amount of serfs. But you're a free spirit, right? You can't be tied down to the land working someone else's land from time to time. You want to be free! Well, you're in luck, Russia, because there's a group of free men living out just beyond your borders. They live in small, independent communities with fierce armies that the Russian state itself would use from time to time going all the way into the 20th century. So yes, the Cossacks are Russian, but you need to think of them as living a lifestyle more similar to the Turks or Mongols living out on the steppe. Very different than the city dwellers of Kiev or Moscow. So as we'll see, as the Tsars of Russia pushed these people too much, the Cossacks pushed back, leading to a series of revolts against the massive Russian Empire. I don't even care. I can't be constrained. I'm literally a Cossack. I'm free. Your time constraints have no power here. Anyways, keep it short and make sure you explore the greater historical context of your topic. Like how do these Cossack rebellions fit into the greater historical context. All right, enough context, let's go to the example. Today we are talking about the Cossacks, and the College Board specifically wants you to focus on the Cossack rebellions against the mighty Russian Empire. So for today, there are plenty of times the Cossacks revolted. So I figured we'd zero in on the most infamous Cossack rebellion of all time. That's right, the Pugachev Rebellion. I know, I know, I know. This rebellion took place in 1775. This period ends in 1750. It's okay, calm down. It plays a huge role in Russian history and culture and definitely fits into the idea of challenging a land-based empire. At the end of this period, Russia is ruled by one of their best, Catherine the Great. That's not a title they throw around lightly in Russia, the Great. In fact, in all of Russia's history, there have only been four greats. So if Mount Rushmore was in the Ural Mountains, it would be Vladimir the Great, converted Russia to Christianity, Ivan the Great, who kicked out the Mongols and took the title Tsar, Peter the Great, the modernizer, First Navy, a million things that guy did, and finally, Catherine. And the weirdest part about Catherine being one of the greats of Russia is she's not Russian. She was from Prussia. The town she's from today is on the Polish side of the Poland-Germany border. But 
she married into the powerful Russian Romanov family. And after a historically terrible marriage, she led a coup to overthrow her husband, Tsar Peter III, to become empress of all of Russia. And in the process, Peter III either died accidentally or was murdered. He was totally murdered. But before her husband died, murdered. Peter III was linked to the idea that he might one day free all the serfs of Russia. But Peter's gone. Murdered. Catherine's now in charge, and she liked to read a lot of Enlightenment stuff and hang out with Voltaire, but when push came to shove, she increased the amount of serfs. She had 500,000 serfs herself. Russia had over 28 million serfs. Not very enlightened. And as Catherine led Russia into another war against the Ottoman Empire, it was the perfect time for the Cossacks to revolt. Think of the Cossacks as Russians, who have left the confines of Russian society to live out on the flat grasslands of Russia called the Steppe. Now there's a lot of different Cossack groups, and a lot of these people here are for a lot of different reasons. One of the larger ones being serfs who've actually fled the land to live this much better lifestyle. They're out living in small groups, riding horses, growing sweet mustaches, subsistence farming, amazing dancing, and recruitment is super easy. Hey, you don't want to be a surf anymore? Want to live free, ride horses, and have a baller mustache? Join us! And with Catherine cracking down hard new laws on the serfs, and with their army away to the south fighting the Ottomans, it's the perfect time for a rebellion. But who could lead this Cossack revolt? What if I told you that Catherine's husband, the former Tsar, Peter III, was not dead? Murdered. In fact, he's now leading the Cossacks! No, oh, that's a lie, because Peter's super dead. Murdered. It was actually led by Yemelian Pugachev, and he was a former Russian officer who was neither a fan of Catherine or serfdom. He became a Cossack and went on to lead the rebellion, but the people definitely believed that he was Peter III. Somehow he had escaped and he's now in charge of the Cossacks. And how much they believed in the cause of stopping Catherine, this foreign queen, and ending serfdom versus this is actually the former Tsar is debatable. Regardless, Pugachev rallied the Cossacks and the peasants and dreamed of a Cossack Tsardom. But that dream was quickly shattered when Catherine's troops returned from fighting the Ottomans, this time to take on the Cossacks. They clashed with the Cossacks, captured Pugachev, and brought him home home to Moscow, where he was quickly drawn and quartered. So, when your teacher asks, identify an example of how state expansion and centralization led to resistance from a local group, brush your mustache and let them know about the reanimated corpse of Tsar Peter III, who led the Cossack Rebellion in Russia. All right, the Cossacks are amazing, but have they been on the exam? No, the Cossacks' free living lifestyle is way too real for the College Board. And they don't release the stimulus-based multiple choice questions every year, so they could be all over there, but we just wouldn't know. And to be fair, the whole section 4.6 challenges to state power has not been used, so maybe this is the year. And if it's not, maybe we all take off, head out to the wilderness, join forces, grow mustaches, live by our wits, reanimate the dead czar, and take our grievances directly to the College Board. Too long? You didn't watch? Let me wrap it up. I came to the realization that my name in Cuman Kipchak Turkish is literally Cossack. My new Cossack lifestyle owes nothing to modern clocks, and I rambled too long on the contextualization. We focused on 4.6 and the challenges to state power, and more specifically, the Cossack revolts against the Russian Empire. Cossacks were Russians living out on the steppes away from Russian society. They led a rebellion against Catherine the Great in a bid to end serfdom and create a Cossack czar that ultimately failed. Were there examples on the past exam? <laughs> of course not. Okay, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Ben Freeman from Freemanpedia.com. So I'm assuming this will be the last illustrative examples video you're gonna watch because you're gonna be out living on the step, living your life, really living. But if you ever do decide to come back to civilization and shave your mustache and study for the AP World History exam, I'll be right here. All right, good luck on the exam in May and I will see you next time.